The lush forests of Mahuba's Kloof are an oasis in the bushveld of Limpopo. Here, the Great Litaba River winds down from the Ebenezer to the Zanin Dam, and plunging down the gorge on this canopy tour is the only way to see it. This is the Volkbuk mountain range, it's part of the Drakensberg. Um, yeah, it's a very beautiful area, there's lots of green and it's the land of the silver mist because it's always misty here. So it stays green all year round, it's beautiful, there's beautiful gorges, beautiful waterfalls, there's lots to do also in this area. And looking down these steep rock faces towards all that cabling, this yes. is the place to come for some adventure and adrenaline, right? Definitely, we have a beautiful activity lined up for you guys today, it's called the Canopy Tour. So we're going to catch you up in this harness, we're going to give you all the safety brief and then we'll go down and have some fun. Scoring 9 out of 10 on TripAdvisor, what visitors from around the world seem to love about this zipline adventure is the emphasis your guides put on safety. It's a no-frills, no-fuss approach which gives you the confidence to experience the thrills safe in the knowledge that experts have your back. Hey brother. Hey, hey, how are you? What's happening? Good, good. Okay. Cool. Yeah, now what? All right, so this is our first light and um, this is how you'll be hooked onto the line. So just make sure that with your less strong hand, this is where you're going to hold. And then your strong hand goes on this line behind the pulley, always behind the mm -hmm. pulley. So just remember to keep it there when you slide and then when you're ready to stop yourself, you just pull it down. So Marcus is going to do a demonstration quickly um, and show you what to do. If you get stuck halfway, okay. then you know what to do. Off you go, lift your legs, off you go. Okay, so you can obviously control how fast you want to go or how slow you want to go with by... this hand. Yeah. If you break before you're supposed to, then you just turn and do the monkey dance just like that. And then you just pull yourself, make sure that, you know, you get to the okay. platform. Okay. John was impressed at how well the rig okay, was cool. built and that the tour is equipped to take adventurers from the age of 7 to 70. Our presenter fits nicely in the middle. Can I go? Yeah. Let's go. Enjoy. Woo! <laughs> Woo Julia and Marcus start you off nice and gently to get you into the swing of it. Suspended from the rig between the rock faces of the gorge, it feels like you're paragliding. But you're so close to the river, you could also be whitewater rafting. It's a unique thrill. Okay. Woo! Oh, man. Awesome, man. Nice. I don't want to break. Was, oh, you don't want to break? I don't want to break. I just want to keep going fast. Each of the 13 zip lines ups the ante a little more than the last. The best thing about the zip line is it actually gets scarier and scarier. So the more you go, the scarier it gets. Here we're literally going to be flying over the rapids and off the end of a waterfall. So this is going to be pretty epic. We'll see you on the other side. <laughs> If you're lucky, you get to see the magnificent giant kingfisher birds hunting. Even if you don't, this fantastic sweep over the plunging Litaba River gives you the feeling you're the one flying. Oh man, that is epic. Yeah. That is a zip line. Yeah. Off the edge of a waterfall, uh, yeah. over the rapids. Where else in the world can you do this? We are so lucky to live in a country where you can yeah. do things like this. And let me tell you, adrenaline is a beautiful thing because it's in that adrenaline where you find peace and serenity. So go out there and do crazy stuff like this because it'll change your life. To the amusement of thrill seekers from across the globe, Limpopo locals still refer to this gem as a foofy slide. The original Afromontane forest you zip through is scarce around South Africa. So in between the bursts of adrenaline, your guides also give you an education on the local ecosystem and wildlife. To meet the area's most famous animal, we dropped by the home of Tony and Shirley Hubert. Today, Jessica the Hippo is a gorgeous, well-adjusted teenager. When Tony found her on the banks of the Blader River 18 years ago, she was an underweight newborn struggling to breathe, who had just lost her mother. How are you, Tony? This way, sorry. How's it going? This way. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't want to get too close. Yeah, this is my really hard. Sit down, take a seat. Is that fine? Yeah. I'm very nervous. This is a, a no one and a half thousand kilogram wild animal. Yeah. Watching you walk her down to the river like that, like a, a tame pet, is quite incredible. Like, it's one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen. Yes, it absolutely is. I mean, interacting with a hippopotamus. No one on earth is doing this. It's the only place in the world. 
this sort of thing is happening. <laughs> the story about how you found Jessica is really quite incredible. She literally washed up onto your doorstep. Yeah, yeah she washed up on our doorstep on the 11th of March 2000 during a flood. And I found her in front there, only um, 16 kilograms, couple of hours old, and I saved her. And what's amazing about her, I've saved many animals in my life, including the big five. And when I raise them free roaming, as they grow up, they stay away longer and longer. Eventually, they don't come back. But uh, she was the first hippo I ever saved. And also raising her free, she kept on coming back. Next month, she'll be turning 18, and she's still here. Still sleeping on the veranda on a mattress, <laughs> and it's cold with cover with a blanket. <laughs> but that's the incredible thing, is she goes and she interacts with other wild hippos and then comes back. So she's completely free to roam around, completely wild. Absolutely. And she, uh, they come to her, yeah? Uh, she goes grazing with them at night. They cut my lawn for me. <laughs> and uh, even when we swim with her, we can have wild hippos lying by those reeds there. And we swim with her here. She's very, very protective. I trust her with my life and she trusts me. We can be swimming with her here if a hippo bull comes closer towards us. She turns around and attacks it and chases it away. Can I have a handful? Handful, yeah. No, no talking. Touch her nose. Like that, no talk. Mm -hmm. You can kneel down. Touch your nose. Touch your nosey. There we are. Fun feeding. That's okay. incredible. Okay. Look at that photo. On the nose. Look at the size of her teeth. Those tusks are insane. They're like that huge. It's amazing. Thank you, Moister. She's so gentle, just. Not so much. And not a threat at all. There's like this energy exchange that happens when you're this close to a wild animal that you actually can't put into words. You can't, I mean, how do you describe the feeling of being so close to a hippo? You can't describe it, right? You can't. 1,800 kilograms of wild animal, and I just touched its nose and its tusks and put food in its mouth. I mean, come on. Jessica literally tips the scales. A hippo power dropped. <laughs> this entire raft just shifted about two meters when she put her feet Don't up. Shirley, just stay in between. Come over here. Mini Prat, come on, Nada. Try for this, you know. Are you on TV? Say morning, sooner. It's definitely a mommy's goal. Only kisses a woman. Yes, if you had an earring, she would have allowed you. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like men, and it comes, comes from childhood when a vet actually darted her, and the vet was a man. So since then, she doesn't let men kiss her, only, only a woman. You observe her closer. Come over here. With your left hand, hold the bottle. With your left hand, yeah, yeah. Come closer. No yeah. talking. Feel her whiskers. <coughs> Feel her lip she's cutting the grass with here. Yeah? Feel it inside there. Oh, it's quite rough, eh? so that's how they get the grass. That's right. I'm not going to ask her to close her eyes. You'll notice she's out of the water, but she's holding her breath. Her nostrils are locked. But this is how hippos breathe. They never breathe normally. On land and in water, they always hold their breath. And she can hold her breath up to eight minutes. So that's how they stay down for so long? That's right. And literally block their nose. Breathing out, breathing in, and locking again. So she's breathing like between 30 to 60 times an hour on land or in water. That's how they breathe. And I presume, well, that's why when she sleeps on the veranda, she, she doesn't snore. <laughs> <laughs> the size of her, what, what do you call them? They, they, uh... Her, her toes. And you notice that they are webbed. There's another myth people say hippos cannot swim. They can swim. They're very good swimmers. And like a submarine, they can adjust the buoyancy to float or to sink. It's remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. Why do you take your shoes off? Are you going to make me jump in the water? <laughs> and your socks. Yeah? Turn around. Put your feet on the back. <laughs> Over here, guys. Just trust both, softly. Both feet. Yeah? Move a bit this way with your, your behind. Okay. With your feet in the water a bit. Yeah? And you can give a massage. You, have a, you, have a, you, you give a massage and you get a pedicure. I'm busy massaging a 1,800 kilogram hippo's back with my bare feet right now. This is absolutely insane. I'm struggling not to shout and scream. I've got to keep my voice down. But uh, I'm serious, guys. I don't think we can beat this. Uh, I, I don't think we should go anywhere else. We should just stay here all day. So step outside the city, put your feet up for the weekend and make new friends. <laughs>